Hey guys, today we are looking into how to make coloured ganache and apply it to a round cake. I've already made my batch of white ganache, this is 3 parts white chocolate to 1 part cream and I have a whole step by step video on how to make it here on my channel which will also be linked in the description box. Now you'll see despite it being called white chocolate, it is actually very yellow in colour so we're going to first whiten it up before adding any colour with whitener. I've got this Wilton whitener, however in the past I've also used Fractal Gel White or Colour Mill. Just use anything you can get your hands on, as whitener was out of stock for quite a while. I do find I get better results with the gel types though, rather than the powder. I'm just mixing this together and you can see it's taking away that slight yellowish tint and making a much brighter base to work with. You can just keep adding as much as you like. I'm just aiming for a mauve colour, adding in pink Pro Gel and a little bit of purple Pro Gel to see what comes out. Now I'm stirring this by hand so you can see how the colour forms, but it does take quite a while. This is why if you have a KitchenAid, feel free to use it. I'm just adding a little bit more lilac here and then I've popped it in my KitchenAid to do the hard work. Just note that when stirring your white ganache, it will make it a bit looser in texture, so just leave it to firm up a little bit again before using it. The steel ball is great for this. Here is my sad looking cake. This is just a chocolate cake which has been rough coated in white ganache to seal all the crumbs in, so when we come to put our coloured layer on, it will be crumb free. First thing I'm doing is adding enough ganache to cover the whole cake right down to the drum. I'm then taking my handy Pro Froster, which you've seen me use several times, and I'm just butting it up against the drum at the bottom and scraping off any excess. I only have this little bit, which means I need to add more ganache to fill that gap. One of my brigadiers requested to see me ganache with the Pro Froster again, so I thought I'd film this process and talk you through how I use it. I also have another video, which I'll leave linked below. Here I'm just swiping off the excess ganache and getting that Pro Froster right up against the drum. It does look a little rough, but the more you go around scraping it off and filling the gaps, you'll start to see a smoother base appear. Now fill any gaps at the top, bringing that Pro Froster arm down and watch that sharp edge slowly appear. You can't really do this all in one go. The key to getting a good base is to get to this stage and then leave it to set. The ganache in my bowl is also starting to harden up a little and you'll find better results by popping it in the microwave for a few seconds to bring it back to a runnier consistency. This will now run into any of those little air holes you'll see on the top and also help get that sharp edge. The key is to build it up in layers with your final layer being a slightly runnier consistency. You'll see how smooth that top looks now and it's filled all those holes in. Again, just keep going around with your tool, but note as it's runnier, it gets very, very messy and you just want to scrape a little bit at a time, putting the excess in the bowl if you can. But to be honest, you'll probably get a lot of it on your worktop. A lot of people can make this look simple as if they've just done it all in one go but you really do have to let it sit in between your layers and you'll find you'll get better results for it as it won't be as wobbly or unstable. Now at this stage, this is what I would usually cover in sugar paste. However, as this cake is just going to be bare ganache and decorated, we want to cover that base drum. I don't plan on using any ribbon, so I'm going to add a thin layer of ganache just to cover it up. I'm just swapping my scraper out for a clean one and I'm just quickly swiping around the bottom, not pressing against the drum as I want to leave a layer of ganache over it. I'm just going around gently and leaving that bottom ganache. You want to let that layer set so you don't scrape it back off accidentally. Once it's set, we can then go in to fill that little lip all the way up to the top of the cake without worrying about exposing that bottom drum again. I'm then just running my scraper around any ganache that is gathered at the top, 
slicing it off a bit like a knife. And that's it, that's my tear fully covered and the drum is hidden. I'm then going to stick this to a bass drum and add two more layers on the top. Stick around for the next couple of tutorials which shows you how I complete the cake. Thanks guys, see you next week.